Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday, June 19th, 2018 meeting of the Raymore Planning and Zoning Commission. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let me remind you, please make sure your microphone is lighted and speak into the microphone for the record and we'll call roll. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Wiggins. Present. Commissioner Armstrong. Commissioner Bowie. Commissioner Crane. Present. Commissioner Pfizer. Present. Commissioner Meiske. Present. Commissioner Urquia. Present. Mayor Turnbow. Present. Commissioner Faulkner is present, and we do have a quorum. No personal appearances this evening. One item on the consent agenda, which is acceptance of minutes from our June 5th, 2018 meeting. And unless any of the commissioners have concerns about the minutes, I would accept either a motion uh, to accept consent agenda or a motion to accept minutes from June 5th, 2018. So moved. Second. Um, okay, not that we're in a race here, but, oh, from the first on the second. All right, uh, motion by Commissioner Arkea, second by Commissioner Crane. And I forget which motion was that, to accept minutes or to accept consent, whichever. <laughs> yes. To accept the minutes, yes. To accept minutes. Uh, all those in favor, raise a hand, please. One, two, three, four, five. I got five in favor. Any opposed? And abstentions? One. Uh, two abstentions who were not here for the meeting. Okay. That's right. And. Uh, Minutes are accepted. We have nothing this evening under old business and one item under new business, which is a review of projects completed in, well, I don't know, is it the past year or 2017? I guess it's probably the past year, right? Um, so staff, Mr. Cataret, Mr. Gress, if you'd like to present this review, we will be happy to listen. Thank you, sir. As you mentioned tonight, we are here to review a handful of projects that were have been approved and completed under the authority of the Planning and Zoning Commission within the last um, couple years. Uh, so similar to the way we review the uh, growth management plan and the unified development code every year to just um, ensure that it's up to date um, with current planning trends. Tonight, we're here to review previous projects to see if they were approved as they were presented to you all um, during the planning process. Um, and to take a look at whether the contents of our Unified Development Code are being applied in the correct way um, and that the items within that code are, are, are there to ensure that quality developments are, are being produced throughout the city of Raymore. Um, so staff has put together a, a little package of, of six different projects that have been approved over the last couple years. Um, so, so for the format of this, I just kind of like to go through each one of these projects one by one. Um, I don't want to go through each image one by one and make you guys follow like that, but I'll kind of um, touch on a couple things about the project to get you all thinking about kind of what maybe the conversation was during that process. Um, and if there's things that you all have noticed that you like about the building or things that you don't like, um, things about the site that work well as far as uh, traffic circulation, pedestrian circulation, things along those lines that work well or things that don't. Um, that's kind of what we're here um, to, to talk about tonight, um, to make sure that, like I said, the things in our, our code are, are producing the highest quality developments um, possible. Um, so if you flip to page number three of the report, um, the first building we're going to look at is the Remington Commercial Building, um, which is also known as the Lonnie Branson Building, State Farm Insurance Building, um, right there off of Remington Plaza and uh, 58 Highway. Um, so the multi-tenant commercial building was approved back in uh, two, or 2015, um, and one of the things that, that really 
make you kind of remember the process. This is actually one of the first buildings that we approved um, that actually allowed the, the front of the building to be a little bit closer to the front property line um, than would typically be allowed by our code. Uh, so the standard front setback for a commercial property would be 30 feet. Um, however, under our code, under the, some, of the, some of the provisions in that code, um, it allowed that to be reduced to be pushed up a little bit closer to 58, uh, provided there was no parking in between. Um, I believe there had to be maybe some additional landscaping in between um, just to improve it a little bit aesthetically. Um, but as far as circulation, um, the overall appearance of the building, building materials and signage, um, I've included a handful of pictures that show different uh, elevations of the building, uh, different landscaping features, um, some of the signage that's included on the building, um, you know, the sidewalks and, and parking lot, um, as well as the uh, dumpster enclosure that's included on the property, uh, and as well as a picture of one of the stormwater BMPs that was included um, as part of the development as well. Um, so there's several several good things about this property. It's, it's definitely one of the, the nicer projects that we've had, I think, in the city as far as um, the completion of the project and overall maintenance. I mean, it's, it's very well taken care of, um, and overall I think it was a very quality project. Um, but I'd be interested to hear if there's anything that you all have noticed over the last couple years since the project has been completed that, that uh, maybe didn't turn out the way we had all expected, um, or if there's anything that, that might have been changed throughout the review process. Mm -hmm. Commissioners? I will say my initial reaction was kind of, oh my, what have we done? It certainly was a change. It was very close to the highway. The fact that there's a, a right turn lane there probably makes, the, makes it appear a little closer actually to the pavement than it would without that right turn lane. But I completely agree with you. It's a, great looking building. Um, I think today, you know, my, my concerns pretty much put to rest. I think that it would not be so obvious that it's different if we had more development uh, with that same rule of, of not having the parking be the be what you see from the highway and so i i understand the concept think it's a good concept especially with a great looking building um when i look and i don't think we've got the photo here but when i look at country club bank to the east country club bank you know the, the styling obviously was done by different architectural firms i I don't think they're exactly matched in terms of, of facade, whatever, but I don't think that that looks bad. I think we like the variety. Country Club Bank, actually, if I remember right, does not have, well, it has some parking on the south side, but not going clear across the building to the corner, both the south and the east sides do not have parking. And I like that setback from the intersection. So I guess going forward, my only concern about a building of, of this particular style built very close to the highway right away would be if it were on a corner, I think I'd have some other concerns about sight lines, things like that. I don't know that we've, well, we've probably got something in code in a separate provision about sight lines and I, I suppose those two would work together with the more restrictive governing yes I do believe that's correct you know, the setbacks you know where they're at um, an, an intersection or corner lot versus an interior lot those setbacks would obviously look at a bit different um, and then to speak to your point about the difference in the buildings and the materiality and the right. facades um, they're certainly you know quite a bit different in their appearance but together they still kind of work together pretty well and, and you know you don't notice one a little bit more than you do the other they they kind of work together work together very well yeah. um and then to your to your comment about you know, having more buildings along this area with them push forward um to, to touch on a previous project that we approved earlier last year the discover vision which is right um back up and under construction right now um if i remember correctly i believe that building is pushed a little bit closer to the front of um, the lot as well. I don't think it's quite as close as this building, but right. um, again, there's definitely not a, a sea of parking in front of that building that you're going to see as you're driving along 58. And, so, and I agree that'll be interesting. It seems like that was in a lull for a 
very long time, and so I'm, I'm interested to see how it pans out. Yeah, okay, other commissioners, comments? Uh, Mr. Grass, it's back to you. Great, thank you. Uh, the second site we'll look at is the Taco Bell, um, right there off of Johnson Drive and 58 Highway. Um, that was approved back in July of 2015, so shortly after the previous project. Um, so I've included the approved renderings that were presented to you all during that process, as well as um, the site plan as, as it was presented, as well as a 2018, the most recent aerial photograph that we have. Um, impressively, you know, this is one of the ones that was completed. I think as close as possible to the approved drawings as you can you can get. Um, as you look at the renderings versus the actual pictures, um, it's it, it's pretty much one and the same. Um, one of the things, just looking back through the staff report, um, since I wasn't here during the, the development of this project, um, just reading back through the comments and, and talking with staff, one of the things that I think was a, a topic for this development was the. Um, the drive-through lane, the lack of the uh, the escape lane, if you will. I'm not sure the, the proper term for it, um, but just that secondary access to get out of the drive-through lane if there were an emergency or you found yourself not wanting to order your tacos after you had ordered them. Um, certainly the, the location of the site and the size of the site altogether, I think kind of limited that. Um, we have a couple other spots in the city where we're, we have similar situation with without that drive lane. Um, just in, in experiencing that and looking at how people go through that, I, I don't think it's an issue, um, people not being able to get out, but um, I'd be curious to hear your all's feedback. Um, like again, I've included several pictures of what the building looks like, the facade, um, the landscaping, the trash enclosure. Um, just be curious what, what your all's opinion would be of this project. Right, and Mr. Grass, I, I think that was a very <coughs> accurate recollection since you weren't here, but yeah, that was, that was pretty much the one key thing that I remember, uh, a lot of discussion on the case. Personally, I don't really have an opinion, so I don't know if any of the other commissioners uh, go through the Taco Bell drive through there to. Yeah, I, I do, in fact, and the only complaint I would have, it would be more for Taco Bell than for the planning itself without having that escape lane is, is a few times they haven't been able to take credit cards Oh. And so when the credit card machine is down, if there's no sign before you pull into that, then you are stuck. <laughs> um, and so that's happened a few times. Uh -huh. uh, but again, I think if, if, if that's just a matter of Taco Bell communicating better, having a sign up that says, hey, you know, before you pull in, cash only or something. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is kind of frustrating to pull in there and then be like, well, now I'm stuck. Yeah. Uh, and I have to wait for the people in front of me to go through before you can get out. <laughs> Um, not that there was an emergency, but just, uh, you know, yeah. annoyance. But again, I think that can be resolved by uh, better uh, communication on Taco Bell's part as opposed to right. the planning process itself if, if something like this was to occur again in the future. I don't know that we'd want to actually include it in code. Um, I know there are other drive throughs uh, you know, McDonald's in particular comes to mind, but you know, I'm probably kind of blurring between Belton and Raymore. I know there are other drive throughs where there are duels. <coughs> I imagine you could probably still get stuck in one of those too, but you know, I, I but think the comment. The McDonald's still have a side lane around the two lanes uh, of drive through that you can right. still get around if you're not going <coughs> through the drive through. Well, it, it seems like if the lot permitted, that would definitely be a good consideration I'd kind of I'd kind of feel like it would be a should rather than a shall excuse me oh well do you want to yeah okay. I'm I'm curious any anything you can share with us oh we were just looking at the uh, Taco Bell and Burger King in Belton oh uh, and they don't have escape lanes either that Taco Bell so it's yeah. no so like I said I don't it's not a huge like I don't think it's a to your point I don't think it's something we need to change in the code I think it maybe just if we're going to approve something like that letting the owner know hey right. if you ever have anything that might create an issue for people put up a sign or something to let them know well so so here's the thing uh, Mr. Cataret uh, myself probably Commissioner Crane um, undoubtedly remember sign code and, and 
you know, you don't turn a battleship in a in a second. It, it's typically with trying to make things better, trying to do better. You know, you you set a course, and as new projects come along, you try to include the latest thinking or the latest amenities in those new projects. Um, so well, and I'm not talking about like a street sign or a big I'm just no. talking like a piece of paper slapped on oh. the little oh no oh, slapped on their little thing right there that just says cash only right now <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not <laughs> suggesting that Planning and Zoning Commission have anything to do with with uh, the credit card machine but you know site plans certainly from a standpoint you know I think our top priorities are probably safety security ranks high in there um, after that, we get into, you know, trying to keep things from being monotonous or uh, tacky in the case of maybe metal, old-style old metal siding, things like that. But I certainly think it would be reasonable for site planning to, well, we do look at traffic flows. So I think in terms of not trapping somebody in a, in a single lane, I, I don't see why that's not a valid consideration. Future discussion. Uh, Commissioner Crane? I was one of the ones that was really worried about going through the drive through and the parking and all of that. But, you know, oh, just, Mike. Light him up. Thanks. Go. Yeah, it's on. It wasn't. Go. <laughs> please, please continue. Sorry, we're okay. messing. Uh, <laughs> Lost my train of thought. No, I, I was concerned about it at the time, but uh, I sit over in the Price Chopper parking lot a lot, waiting on my wife. <laughs> and uh, I, I've watched it go through there at all times of day, at dinner time, and things like that. And it doesn't seem like they have any problems over there. Traffic moves well in and out of there. They get parked. They get they, so uh, you know a lot of the concerns I had. They kind of just faded away once I saw the operation you know, going on. Yeah. Mr. Catterhead? I do, kind of following up on Commissioner Crane's comment, I was curious, I, one of the other things that came up with site plan review was the, there's somewhat of a limited distance before the menu board. I mean, it, it met code, but I was, mm -hmm. I think some commissioners were concerned that the traffic would back up into the main entrance aisle for Price Chopper. I have not seen that. Is that any, no. You've seen that? I've not seen How, I have experienced that as well, where you're you're basically in the Price Chopper parking lot. Now you don't have to, you're not on the main the main little entrance okay. way or whatever, because you pull around and you come through, but you're you're cutting through the parking lot is it, to be mm -hmm. in line. That's what's happening. And yeah. If it happened often or is it just really? Maybe a couple times. Okay. Not that I'm a frequenter okay. of Taco Bell or anything, but. Uh, <laughs> was, no. the, was the parking <laughs> stacked up that made it a problem or was the parking lot no, pretty empty when the, it happened? No, it was the drive through I mean, there was parking, but you, you know, most people don't, you know, like with kids, you don't want to get out of the car. You just want to go through the drive through It's easier. Right, but right. Um, it, it, like I said, it's only happened a couple of times. But okay. to the point, it, you know, it when they're taking credit cards, it moves pretty quickly. Um, so there's really not a, you know, a huge, you okay. know. But, yeah, a, a few times I've been in line in the parking, you know, basically in Price Chopper parking lot waiting for the line to move. But we knew it was going to be tight because that was the main entrance coming off, you know, to get into. The, we knew there wouldn't be yeah. a tremendous amount of stacking. So I actually am a, a pretty much weekly regular at Price Chopper, and I do always park on that side of Price Chopper's lot. And I guess one good thing is I don't remember that I've ever seen the Taco Bell patrons and the Price Chopper patrons actually parking together. There's always a little bit of open space kind of between the two groups of cars. so. It does seem to work out reasonably well. If it were tighter, yeah, I think we might have we might have concerns <coughs> both about blocking a traffic aisle and and uh, maybe not having enough shared parking. But from my experience, you know, mainly patronizing Price Chopper, it it seems to work out well. And Price Chopper itself, you know, the tendency is always to park closer to the door. So if it's really busy, you know, it's never been a problem to find spaces up toward the highway. 
What other comments just uh, that staff made on, on this particular side? I, and I think it's a combination of, this is a corporate Taco Bell, so I think the approach was a little bit different, but mm -hmm. what stands out to us is the landscaping mm -hmm. of this Taco Bell. It really is, it really did a nice job. And yeah. from our standpoint, the preservation of existing trees mm -hmm. helped this overall yeah. site. So I think that was something we did very well in making them work around the existing trees. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but for Taco Bell, again, not, not comparing to Belton's, but when you look at, you know, it's a sea of asphalt concrete around the one in Belton, where I think this one really stands out. Just, it's still an obvious, you know, corporate Taco Bell building. Mm -hmm. You know it when you see it, but the landscaping kind of really jumped out at us. So I think that's something for us to think about when we look at other projects as well. If we can preserve trees like what we did with Culver's, mm -hmm. Uh, we did very oh, well yeah. on that site. Yeah, I think it's something east. that we really need to look at. Well, the other thing, and you know, I know we're not going to get away from pavement. I, I personally still uh, am not a fan of nine foot wide parking spaces. I liked them better in the old days when they were 10, because it doesn't matter that a lot of cars have gotten smaller. There's still a lot of big trucks, big, suburbans and and tahoes in the neighborhood and uh, so on the one hand you know i like a parking lot that's got plenty of room for the big vehicles on the other hand i don't like all the impervious surfaces so um, i i hope as time goes forward i hope that we can look more and possibly pioneer more use of the pervious pavers, things like that. And uh, you know, that probably creates its own issues in terms of all the weeds and stuff that would love to grow through them. But I, I still think there's room for uh, less pavement. And um, I, do, I do agree with you all on the landscaping. That is a nice looking facility. I think there's still a few outlots on the price chopper property yet to develop so hope we get to revisit this in a couple of years and see some further development and see how it works in commissioner Meisky uh, I, I just want to make this part of the record because uh, commissioner Anderson and I really had a concern with the single lane the no escape route if something happens in that lane but they're not taking credit cards. It's backed up. How does an ambulance get to somebody in a car that's having a heart attack, a baby, whatever? And I think that was our biggest concern is, is there's no way of getting to a car that's two spots away from paying, you know, and so. I think you're gonna be on foot. Well. <laughs> Close. Well, Close well, parking, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the, if you're on Johnson Drive, you, you're. 10 feet away from the drive through lane. Yeah, right. You just literally could <laughs> walk across the grass, but but if, if future projects, that may not be the case. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's what our concern was with mm -hmm. this, knowing that we couldn't change it because it was already going to be approved. However, if it comes up again, I think there was some lot restrictions that they couldn't go any wider or something like that. But, uh, you know, if there's if it's got that capability, we'd we'll like to see that. I would. That escape route. I mean, obviously Johnson was right there, but if you look at um, Panda Express, it backs up to Golden Corral, so there is not an immediate mm -hmm. roadside access through that single lane. So right. that is a very valid comment for. The well, and I think don't we depend on on uh, South Metro Fire to also review access to buildings, so. We're, we're leaning on them if, if they have concerns about being able to get fire equipment in. I think that's going to address some of our concerns. If they don't, then yeah, we're probably worrying more than we need to, would be my take. But still good, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on going forward. Other comments on Taco Bell? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Gress. Great, great comments. 
Now the third site that we'll look at is the Raymore Market Center, a little bit more uh, recent project. Uh, it was approved back in June of 2017 and was completed uh, late last year. Uh, this is the multi-tenant commercial building, which has um, the K-Jewelers, uh, Firehouse Subs, among others, uh, the Mod Pizza. Um, very nice looking building in my opinion. Um, it c uh, complied very well with a lot of our design standards and was kind of one of the more um, first modern looking buildings I guess you'd see in comparison to what uh, some of the other buildings look like here throughout the city. Um, some of the things I think that work well about this site, um, the, the building overall I think is, is sited very well right there on the corner. It's very prominent um, in addition to the sculpture that was placed there soon after the building was completed. I think it, it really ties the site all together. Um, you know, parking is really an issue. One of, the, one of the topics that we often go back to is the access right there off of, um, from the site onto 58. Um, you know, turning left out of there isn't always easy as it's, it's doable sometimes, but it can also, uh, you know, cause traffic to back up there for people trying to make that left turn out of the parking lot. Um, you know, pedestrian access to the site uh, was a little bit of a challenge due to the different uh, grade level from 58 down to the site, um, but they definitely found ways to make it happen. Um, you know, it's a little bit indirect and, and not the most accessible route by, meaning, by any means, but um, it's, uh, it's good to still have that pedestrian access from 58 down to the site. Um, now the first aspect of this would be the multi-tenant commercial building and then the um, Qdoba, those were kind of approved together and then the Panda Express came um, separately, so we'll talk about the Panda Express here in just a minute. Um, I'd just be curious, I know there's several, you know, there's restaurants, there's retail, um, a different mix of different uses in here, but I think they all work together with the, you know, I've got outdoor patio seating for one restaurant and another um, versus, you know, K Jewelers, which, which doesn't need that, but I think overall that those different uses work together um, very well, you know, access to the site and circulation works out very well. Um, so again, several pictures. Um, one of the things that, that kind of caught my attention was uh, on page 17, you'll see the monument sign um, that's located right there on the entrance off of 58. Um, the building is, is pretty well full. There's, there's one tenant space left, um, and I think they're kind of closing in on a tenant there here pretty quickly. Um, but one thing that caught my attention is that Mod Pizza is the only tenant that has chosen to put a sign on that, on that monument sign right there. Um, they've got wall signs on all of the buildings that are occupied, um, but Mod is the only, um, the only tenant who has chosen to, to utilize space on that sign. Um, there might be plans for them to do that in the future. They just haven't gotten around to it yet with their, their opening and things like that. Um, it was just one thing that kind of caught my attention was the lack of, uh, we always hear about you know, the importance of signs for businesses and drumming a business, um, and then you know, the prime opportunity to have some advertisement there on 58, and um, you know, they're, just, they're just not taking advantage of it. Um, so I'd be curious to see what, what your, your kind of thoughts are on the design of the building. Like I said, it's a little bit more modern than what you, you typically see here so far. Um, so I'd be curious to see what your, your opinions and thoughts are on, on this building. Yeah. Commissioner Wiggins. <laughs> Although I was not on the commission at the time, but one of the things that I like about it, not only the, the modern look of it, but um, when you drive around at our town and others, a lot of developments that would be similar to this in nature of a multi-commercial space, they tend to be very flat, very rectangular box of, you know, just it's one big, one big Lego block that's been put down. <clears throat> and so I really appreciate the... Um, the different textures, different co colors, different materials. You know, you've got uh, the different heights and elevation change. You've got stone, you've got stucco, you've got glass. Um, so personally, I, I just like that it looks almost like five separate buildings have been built together as opposed to, you know, uh, you, you drive to some other shopping malls and it's literally just one square or rectangular block that they just put some doors in. So um, I really appreciate that and I hope that other developers and designers um, choose to utilize similar elements like this because it does uh, improve the visual appeal of it. Yeah, Commissioner Pfizer. Um, I remember when they brought this to us and I remember asking them if they were gonna try and save any trees. Hmm. And they said that they would try, and probably within a month, the place was just totally mowed down. I thought, yeah, nice job there. But I was really kind of horrified, too, to have the house and the barn torn down, because it's like when we first moved here, that's the first thing you see. Mm -hmm. But I have to admit, I really do love this place, and I love to go to uh, Mod Pizza and Firehouse Subs and Qdoba. Panda Express, I could live without, but I think it's a beautiful building. Um, my only real complaint is when you drive in off of 58, if you try to make that right, um, 
I'm pointing to it, which doesn't help you guys, but um, <laughs> if you're driving in and you take an immediate right, like in front of Qdoba, that seems like a really tight turn into there. It seems like people, if someone's coming out, they're always kind of in the middle, and that's the only thing. It just always feels really tight there. So usually I don't even turn there. I go around and park in the back because mm -hmm. it's just easier to get in and out there. But that's the only thing, and I, and I wish that... I love the sculpture, but I wish there was more green space around it because mm. it kind of feels like it it's attached to the stores and I, I wish it I wish it had a little more prominence because I think it looks really oh, nice. I yeah, I, mm. I, I think I mentioned that to the Arts Commission that wouldn't it be nice to put some trees behind it, but there's mm. not really a lot of space. But but I do think it's it's great and I when I drive past it I am, you know, impressed with the way it looks and it it does look cool and modern and matches the drawings and um, so I do like it so yeah. I, I'd give it a thumbs up yeah. Commissioner Wiggins. well I'd just be curious um, and it's probably more of a question for you that the comment about the, the turn it, is it the elevation change that probably leads to that since it's kind of a, a downhill that maybe people take more of a gradual turn I, I just happen to be looking at Google Maps on the street view and you can actually see the tire treads go wide of the yellow line on all of them so people are more turning into the middle turn lane as opposed to the right turn um, so I just didn't know if that had something to do with the elevation change and, and is that something that in the future um, if we do have a, a you know a big change like that could you know, incorporate a, a wider turn lane or something. I, I don't know. It, obviously, that's more up your guys' alley or or somebody from the engineering or or you know planning, as opposed or with more of a technical background. It's probably more a factor of speed than it is of anything else. Yeah. Comment. I just commissioner Key. I know that when you're coming across that when you're when you're going eastbound and you come through the light. And then you realize, oh, that's where Firehouse Sub is, and you're going 40 miles an hour to then break and make that turn um, is probably what's causing most of that, more so than the actual mm -hmm. uh, elevation change, just from what I've witnessed. But right. so I'm kind of all over the scale on this. Overall, I definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, no, no question about that. I love the sculpture. Um, some days I actually wish there was more wind, but I love the sculpture. They've got that damp just enough. Um, I like the buildings. I think it works very well. I still do not like Old Kentucky Road on the north side of 58, and mainly because, you know, sometime <laughs> late last week, early this week, Here's somebody going eastbound trying to turn left onto Kentucky, and they don't get over into the center lane. They block the driving lane. And so that's probably the main reason I don't like this intersection. But, you know, if I don't like it, I'm just really not going to like anything about it. I am still really unhappy with the developers, I'll say, that we weren't able to get a better access from the uh, from from the south side uh, Galleria into this. I'm I'm certainly pleased that the little sneak path through uh, Golden Corral worked. That that saved it. Um, without that, I think it would have been a mess. With it, yeah, it works. It's a little bit twisted. Um, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting about this, so uh, let's see. I guess I'm, I'm actually on the photographs on page 16 and 17, and this is a little bit leveraging our discussion about the, the whatever we called it, the Matt Davidson building or the, or the Lonnie Branson building, sorry. Um, but you know, when you look at the north side of the, the multi-tenant building, that's perfectly logical. It's kind of similar in concept, at least, to the building, what, to the west with Sherwin-Williams and, and, and et cetera. So you've got, you've got parking there, this, and this is, I'm going to call it a little bit old school again, 
parking there between the highway right away and the front of the building, that part works, makes sense, but then you have additional parking on the back side. So you go to the photo at the top of page 17, and I actually, um, there's, there's a similar type of building that this reminds me of out in Torrance, California, which you could say, what does that have to do with Raymore? But I think on that one, you can actually come into the, and I don't remember if it's a subway or what, but you can actually come into it from either side. And there's actually, as I recall, there isn't any parking on the highway side, which is actually the entrance. So it's kind of weird, but, but you know, maybe the, maybe the good thing about having some of the parking in front, some in back, is none of it's really a long distance to walk. But it, lo looking at the photos, particularly tonight, the parking on what I'm going to call the back side, the, the um, south side of the multi-tenant building, just seems kind of like, yeah, how does that work? You can actually enter the firehouse sub and the uh, mod pizza from the south side. Good. It's only K, which makes perfect sense that they don't want multiple entrances to a jewelry no, store no. for easy in and outs. Okay. Um, but yeah, the two restaurants you can get in and out of on okay. both sides. Well, that is good to hear then. Because uh, I, I, I'll be honest, like you, I park on the south side when I go here uh, to go into Firehouse or wherever I'm going to eat. And it, so now you know the truth, and, and I have actually eaten in Qdoba, but I've not yet eaten in Firehouse <laughs> and Mod, and so those are on my list. But now you know you can enter through the south Good. side. Oh, that that makes more sense. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I I agree with the other comments, and overall, you know, it it works. I'm I'm very pleased with it. Other comments? Yeah. All right, Mr. One, Grass. One thing I'll add that I I was almost sure that I included a picture of it, but it seems to have been huh. thrown out in the process. Oops. Um, but if, you, if you've been to the site recently at all over the last couple of months, you'll notice so they have um, on the south side of the property in between um, the multi-tenant building in Qdoba, they've got their trash enclosure with their dumpster. Um, but what they've added in the last several months is a recycling container, which is not screened like a, a typical dumpster would be required to. It's just mm -hmm. simply sitting in um, one or two parking spaces, um, and it's labeled for recycling only um, for, for the tenants. Um, so what we've talked about internally, you know, by code, they're, they're not required to screen it because it's by nature, it's not a, a trash receptacle. It's a recycling receptacle. <laughs> um, so we've been kind of on the fence as well. How, well, how do you classify that? It's by code, it's not. And then you start looking at other locations with the price drop across the street. They have their ripple glass, you know, recycling container, which is also not required oh. to be screened. <laughs> um, so we would just be interested to hear your, your thoughts on that. You know, should all, you know, refuse receptacles be can, required to be screened or should we differentiate between trash receptacles and recycling? Is there a difference between the two? Um, one thing we've talked about, the difference between I think this site's recycling container and the one at Price Chopper is that this one is really designed to serve um, the tenants and the users of the site, whereas the Ripple Glass is more of a community asset, if you will, yeah. you know, it's, it's available for anybody in the community to come, to come use. Um, so, so far, I mean, that's the one distinction between, I think those two recycling containers, but right. I'd be curious to see, curious to hear your all's thoughts on the requirement for well, screening it, of those. It sounds like you've got a very, sounds like you've got a very thorough grasp on all of the pros, cons and, and issues. I have no problem with the ripple glass recycling simply because of what it is. It's a community asset. Um, I'm pleased that somebody manages to keep the area around it fairly clean. That hasn't always been the case, but you know, people are sloppy sometimes and glass breaks. But I, given the choice of having the recycling container not screened or not having the recycling container, hey, guess which way I'm gonna go? Uh, the recycling trumps the, uh, the, the need for screening. But I think when you first mentioned that in terms of the multi-tenant building, it's kind of like, hey, it looks like a dumpster. It should be screened like a dumpster. So you all have agonized over this already, I can tell. Other comments, thoughts? Yeah, Commissioner Meisky. 
Yeah, the Benton House, uh, their recycling is behind the screen and everything. And I don't know if that was required by us or if they just came in and said that's what they were doing. I don't remember, but yeah, they're recy they have two, they have a trash and then they have a recycling. So, and I know it's behind the screen. Other comments? Yeah, I mean, about? from my perspective, from the city's perspective, I mean, now this is just the mayor talking here, but the <laughs> uh, I think it should be screened, uh, be frank with you. The uh, use of uh, two parking spots in an area where there's parking that's already precious to the, to the tenants in that area. We've got one that just had a ribbon cutting today, mm. spoke very mm. highly of the architectural design of the building when I talked to the new tenants. Um, they were talking to some uh, folks about another project over in Olathe that they're going to uh, put in and they were hoping that they would replicate what we've done here. So they were very complimentary of that. And I think having that recycling container while needed is uh, in sitting in parking spots is, uh, is an inappropriate use of those parking spots. I, I feel like those types of containers should be screened uh, in an appropriate spot. The, if you're talking about across the street, there's the potential of that being relocated should those pads out there be developed in the near future. So um, it's just there now as a public service as was previously announced. So right. I, uh, I, from my perspective, I would really like to see that screened and moved out of a, of a parking spot because that's, right. th that's a precious commodity in that area, especially if we're gonna get that other uh, tenant spot filled. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Turnbull. I'm, I'm sort of thinking, what would that be, the 27th Amendment to the UDC or 28? I've kind of lost count here, but yeah, that, that to me, that sounds worth uh, pursuing at, a, at another Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. You know, we just, we just went through our review of code, but uh, any of the other commissioners feel real strongly one way or the other about wanting to screen recycling containers like trash containers? Uh, I definitely would be in favor of it. Um, you know, even though on the side it might say recycling only, uh, in driving by a recycling dumpster looks just like a trash dumpster. So from a visual perspective, um, even though it might not have old food and beverages leaking out of it, it mm. still, you know, might not smell as bad as the, the item next to it. Right. Visually, I bet if you ask nine, t nine out of 10 people would say it, they think it's a trash dumpster. So unless it was gonna all of a sudden become a community commodity where obviously we have curbside recycling, but unless all of a sudden it was, you were inviting the community to use it, it probably should be behind, uh, you know, some sort of screening because it's for the strict use of Right. that development and and i agree that that's the distinction so you know a lot of things have changed uh, we now have recycling as part of the trash service which which we have not always had certainly uh, i can remember if if i could remember the name of the church uh, just west of freedom stop uh, there used to be an abitibi paper recycler there, I think there were actually two of them back kind of about halfway along the side of the church. And I think those needed to be publicly visible and, you know, even on highway location because that's how I knew they were there. I used those. I also used the uh, one between the old Radio Shack and, and, uh, Let's see, that would be Lord of Love, Lutheran in Belton, um, which I think all of those now are gone. I don't know, I guess Abitibi found it no longer profitable to have those, but I, I, it seems like, uh, picking up on Commissioner Wiggins' comment, the distinction would be if it's a publicly available recycling bin, something like that, it needs to be visible that's kind of the opposite of screening, but if it's for the benefit of the business, like the dumpster, then it probably needs to be screened. And, you know, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to grandfathering any of those that are currently out there unscreened either, just to make it a little less of a burden on the, on the business. 
Other commissioners? No. Sure, Commissioner Fizer. Would it be possible to, I mean, I, I like the idea of screening it too, but would it be possible to require everyone to have a trash dumpster and a recycling bin that, you know, I mean, we can't force them to use it, but if you have it, you're more likely to use it. I mean, just as, is that infringing too much? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little squeamish about it myself. I feel like, let's take one step at a time, but <laughs> But well, of course, for, for commission future. goes commission goes with majority opinion. So it just you know seems like if if it's kind of yeah. built in there already, it, you know, just a thought. Yeah, just a, a comment to add to that. Um, two things: one, obviously, the developer or the, the the landlord is paying for the cost of the service, so obviously um, they would incur a cost there. And having done some retail um, at a large. Uh, shopping center that had both like, cardboard recycling in the back plus dumpsters. Uh, the vast majority of the businesses, as the pe the employees are walking out, if they have the option of putting everything in one bin, bin or separating it into two, they're all putting it in one. So the trash bin was always full, and the recycling bin was almost never full because, you know, the guy who's getting paid eight dollars an hour who has to take the trash out is probably not going to take the time to sort the boxes from the trash. And vice versa. Obviously, that's not the case with everybody. Somebody like a restaurant might be easier to sort that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's um, where I was going to go and say, hey, in my previous life, I worked in restaurants, and you had your trash can, you had your call it your cardboard box bin, and then you had mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. grease trap, um, and you did. I mean, we did separate it. It just it made life a lot easier because, especially in a restaurant where you had a lot of trash, if you put your cardboard in with the trash, you run out of room oh. very very quickly. Uh, so, whereas in a retail space, I'm sure it's a lot different. Uh, you have maybe a couple of trash bags, you know, compared to a restaurant where you have lots and lots of trash. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what created the recycle bin at this is the restaurants that are there in the boxes that they had and needing, yeah. not wanting to take up trash bin space with the cardboard. Uh, my only comment would be if, if, which obviously at every restaurant I worked at, it was enclosed with the, you know, it was enclosed with the trash, so it wasn't uncommon to see that. Um, but the only thing I'm thinking here is, is if you had required that with the construction of that, knowing that restaurants might go in or that recycling was required, uh, it probably would have taken up a couple of car parking spaces anyway mm -hmm. to create the area to put the recycle bin in. Um, I'm sure aesthetically it's going to look a lot nicer to have it within the screened area as opposed to just out in parking lot spots. Right. Um, but uh, a requirement or not, I think every business is different in its volume. And like we just mentioned, a restaurant's going to have a lot more trash and right. cardboard as compared to a retail space. So the type of business and the amount of trash it's going to generate, a small office building, you know, I think, I think the one we looked at before where you have a law firm and a insurance agency, right. I don't see them generating a ton of trash one way or the other to require two separate maybe overkill in that type of a situation. Right. Um, so I think being cognizant of what is going to be in the development uh, would make a lot of sense of then kind of determining what the requirement would be. Yeah, I agree. And just kind of to reemphasize, you know, my priority would be to <coughs> facilitate recycling would, would be my top priority. Screening the recycling bin after that so I would not want to require screening and discourage someone from having a recycling bin at all. And the kind, only, of, kind of a balance there. The only thing I would add to that is that if you, I know a lot of times if you don't have it screened in, whether it's private or public, public believe that they can use it um, because it's easily accessible for them. Hmm. And so then what you end up is with trash in your recycle bin because it's oh, not, well, not screened in. Messed up. Um, but uh, yeah. anyway. So the screening might be self-preservation for a business. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I think in this case, it's probably the lack of thought that restaurants might go in there and then the need for a, a cardboard box because you go through a lot of boxes in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's not, I mean, we have a lot of growth and people moving in, but people moving in don't need boxes. It's the people moving out. So we're, right. we're in, the, in the rare situation where we have a lot more people moving into the town. Uh, so restaurants probably aren't giving out their boxes like hmm. some of the places where I worked where, yeah, you'd have people, they knew when your tra your uh, food trucks came in and 
they'd be in line waiting for you to bring the boxes out and <laughs> take them off your hands for you. But uh, otherwise, I'm guessing that's probably what triggered the need for a recycle bin there. Hmm. Okay. Thank you all. Other comments? Uh, Mr. Grass, if you will proceed very cautiously, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about Qdoba next, right? Thank you, sir. Uh, right next door to the uh, Mod Pizza and the rest of the uh, multi-tenant building is the Qdoba restaurant. Um, I think we've already talked about a lot of the issues and things that you've all noticed about the site overall as far as traffic coming in out of the site, um, trash enclosures, recycling enclosures. Um, so maybe we can talk about this one. This building, I think, sticks out a little bit more, maybe than maybe more so than the multi-tenant building, um, just because the the colors they kind of incorporated some artwork into the building um, to make it look, you know, a little bit different. Um, I think it turned out nicely, but it's definitely, um, again, something a little bit different than you would see um, in some of the older buildings that you, that we have here in the community. Um, so again, I've included pictures of all four sides, um, some of the artwork, um, kind of the middle middle sign if you will on the on the west kind of corner of the building um, the outdoor patio seating which is usually always full on a nice day when i go that way over lunch um, so overall I, I think the building looks nice like i said we've already touched on some of the some of the topics as far as the site overall but i'd be curious to hear the commission's opinion on how the building turned out how it looks and um, some of the aesthetics of the building yeah. commissioner Pfizer. I think it looks great, and I love Qdoba. The food is wonderful. Um, and their bathrooms are really kind of fancy. You should check those out if you're there. Mm. Um, I hadn't been in there in a long time. My, my daughter's like, oh, go check out the bathroom. And I'm like, OK. And it was. It was really, really nice. So it's my little plug for their bathroom. But I think it looks really great. And anytime there's outdoor seating, I love it just because it seems more festive somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I just I think the colors are good. And um, just overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it how it turned out. Uh, Commissioner Williams. Um, sorry. It's kind of a random question because I was not um, on the commission. The, um, the designs look to be like the building was maybe intended to be larger than the physical one that's built. Obviously, things change from, you know, from the drafting board to the actual construction. I just was curious, was, you know, like, I, for instance, they had the rear rear view that shows you know the the door and a large mural across the back but then you actually look at the physical one um it seems a lot more narrow so i just didn't know if their original was there ever anything that their designs were larger um intended like the front elevation you've got the double glass windows and then you move over and you've got six windows including a full door on the on the I guess it would be the western elevation, yeah, west elevation there, and then you actually look at the, the physical one, it's quite a bit smaller. I just didn't know if there was uh, some changes that occurred in between there. Obviously, like I said, going from artist and architectural rendering to physical building, things change, but it just looks like the f final product was smaller. Is that a true observation or just happens to be just the way that it looks? I think one of the one of the things you might be noticing are your eyes playing tricks on you with the the drawings on page 19 kind of enlarged a little bit to kind of fill up the page um, but one of the things I, I've kind of noticed just in looking at this is I think some of the reasons that, that the windows might have shifted the building might look smaller is um, what you're not seeing in the renderings is the outdoor patio area the the screening of that the the railing that's required and some of the landscaping so maybe um, to incorporate some of that and the landscaping around the patio they had to shift some of those elements of the building the the length of the windows the width um, and what have you over. Um, I'm not aware, I, I wasn't with the city when this project was approved, but I'm not aware of any um, changes to the site plan or the size of the building. I don't know if Mr. Ketterick can, can clarify that for me, but um, I, I, just, I just wouldn't be aware of that myself. No problem, it was not, uh, nothing of importance, just to, obviously there were things that were different from the final versus what the, um, yeah. the plan images show. Commissioner oh. Urquia. And then, if, am I looking at this correctly that the uh, trash enclosure, which in the renderings is attached to the building, is now off to the south, correct? Because I don't, in the actual pictures, I don't see the trash enclosure attached to the building, nor do I see a picture of it. It might be there at the left in the photo on the bottom of page 20. I'm not quite positive. Yeah, on the, on the left side of. If you look back to page. Elevation. Page 15 that showed the approved site plan for the entire area. You can kind of see it, um, kind of in the lower southeastern corner of the building. It's kind of tucked away on the very southern southeastern corner of the uh, of the building itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of 
couple of observations, and, and again, I'll give this a, a big thumbs up. I like the wall art. I, I think that's a nice touch. I probably have seen one or two other Qdobas around the country, but I don't remember them real well. So I like the wall art. I think I'm hoping I'm correct. That doesn't count as a sign, correct? And I, and I like that. I wouldn't want to disturb that. One thing I find interesting, and it wasn't so obvious until I'm comparing the drawing with the photograph, but the drawing of East Elevation on the bottom of page 19 doesn't show all the utility boxes. The photo on the bottom of page 20, you know, you could, you could make those utility boxes disappear some if they were painted compatible color with the with the building and you know maybe at some point in time that will happen but you know it, it's really intriguing if that were the back side of the building I wouldn't have a bit of a concern but when you think about it that side faces uh, Panda and so when you look at the when you look at the overall development with, if, if I'm looking correctly, um, you know, you got all those utility boxes on, on a face of the building that you're actually going to see, I think, pretty prominently when you're over in Panda's lot. It's kind of like, eh, you know, not a big deal, but doesn't, doesn't strike me as the ideal situation either. Mr. Chairman, yeah, I was just kind of discussing with Mr. Gress. The Mod Pizza, we did a good job of having them put up a, a screen decorative wall of their outside utility connections. Right. Did not do that with Qdoba. That, that should have been screened better than, well, it's not screened at all. There should have been some screening element as part yeah. of the Qdoba building. Yeah. It, it does stick out. You're correct. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I, I don't want to. I don't want to try to change anything now. But I, I think the whole purpose of this evening's review is to learn going forward. And, and exactly. Certainly, you know, not a big deal. Definitely not a showstopper, but an opportunity to learn. And a lot of it is the color coordination. Just the downspout on the back of the east elevation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it somewhat fits. Yeah. The building. It's the gray of the electrical right. uh, connections, boxes, and that 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 really is kind of jumping out at us. If they maybe at the very least, it changed the color of them. Yeah, and you know, you buy them painted. Why bother to paint them again? But at at, yeah. at some later date, perhaps they will. Yeah, it's just just an interesting observation. Something to learn from. Other commissioners have comments about. Qdoba. All right, Mr. Grass, let's go eat at Panda then. All right, the last one here at the Raymore Market Center would be the Panda Express. Um, was approved in November of 2016. Um, as we mentioned, similar to the Taco Bell, um, I think this site also struggled with the uh, overall size of the site, really limited its ability to mm -hmm. um, incorporate one of those emergency access lanes if it were required. Um, however, just in the couple times I've been here, I've never seen it um, back up, similar to what we talk about with Taco Bell. Um, I think the length of the drive through and kind of where the order board is placed at, um, I think you know the stacking of vehicles worked very well. Um, one thing that we were talking about here internally just a little bit before the meeting was uh, I mentioned the pedestrian access from 58 down to the site. Um, obviously, a, a very large grade change that we talked about with the parking lot. Um, but to accommodate the uh, pedestrian access that was required by code, um, you kind of have this indirect kind of roundabout access to the site, which still works, but um, just presented a little bit more of a challenge to make that mm -hmm. to make that connection to the site. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't really paid attention when I drive by. I haven't really seen a lot of people use that. Um, but I can imagine if, if somebody were, you know, needing to access that site from the from the sidewalk, whether they're walking or in a wheelchair, um, it's still, you know, good to make those connections despite any topographical challenges or any other challenges for the site. Um, but overall, like I said, uh, just more more pictures of the site. This, this site also has the uh, outdoor eating area, which which I like as well. Um, uh, but overall, I think this, this, this project turned out very well and kind of fits very well with the architecture of um, the buildings that are right next door. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Commissioner Wiggins. Sorry if this is a silly question. Um, one thing that I noticed, Panda used concrete for their parking spaces and everything else is asphalt to the west. Is there any particular reason? Was it just something they chose to do? Um, do they pay for, like, is it like a corporate kind of thing where they paid, so they just they go ahead and invest the extra money due to the lifespan of concrete versus asphalt, et cetera? I know the, the Qdoba and then the retail building done at the same time, same developer, preference of asphalt. Uh, the Panda Express was a kind of an out lot, it's a separated out, so they, a different uh, builder developer did that project, but yeah, I think that was just a choice of the, of the owner. Yep. Other questions, comments? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Grass, I guess we're ready to talk about center view. <laughs> All right, last but not least would be the uh, Centerview Community Building, um, located right behind City Hall here, approved on June uh, 19th, 2016, um, completed uh, kind of early last year. Um, overall, a very nice looking building, a very good asset for the community. Um, I think it's kind of been received very well. Um, a lot of people from the community, um, homeowner associations, uh, different community groups utilize that building very well. Um, and I think it re works really well for, their, um, for the events that they have. Um, one of the other things that was very inter interesting about this building to me is that, um, you know, just by code of, of being in the circle, um, parking isn't allowed to be right up front. Um, it's still right there off of Broadmoor, but it's, it doesn't really take your attention away from the overall aesthetics of the building. It's still kind of hidden away, even though, um, you know, it's, it's not really tucked away behind the building. Um, so I think that worked out very well. Um, Again, some of the landscaping around the building, outdoor patio, I think was very nice. Um, the landscaping on, on, on really all four sides turned out very nicely. Um, and then again, to, to, to your point about the previous building with the utilities, one thing that I did notice about this building um, that didn't surprisingly catch my attention with one of the other properties was the um, utility box that's lo located right there on the south side. Um, perhaps some screening or maybe just some additional landscaping to kind of detract your attention away from that might have made that that section of the building a little more appealing. Uh, but overall, I mean, this is a, a very nice looking building, in my opinion, like I said, very well received by the community. Um, circulation and parking works very well, um, especially with the increase in parking on uh, along the circle. Um, anytime that I've seen this parking not fill up, there's always cars parked on the circle um, with, with easy access to the, build, access to the building, um, especially with the sidewalk that was you know completed recently. Um, it really helps with the pedestrian circulation around the circle to the building, um, to and from City Hall, I think works really well. Um, but I'd be curious to hear your all's thoughts if you had a chance to either utilize the building or go inside of it or, or park at the building and walk around the circle. I'd be curious to see, see um, kind of what your, your experience has been. Commissioner Meiske? I've not been in the building or around it, so uh. sorry. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Pfizer. Um, I've been to a couple of events there, and I think it's a really nice facility. Um, the The deck is really just beautiful, and I actually went to a paint and sip wine thing <laughs> on the, the patio, and it was great, except that they needed more lights because it was in the evening and it got pretty dark, so I was in a good spot. I could still see my painting, but people mm -hmm. on the edge, not so good. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but it was really fun. But it's it's just a really nice facility, and it's it it doesn't look that big, but it actually holds a lot of people. It's a lot bigger inside, and I think the kitchen facilities are really nice. Just the whole layout is is done really well. Yeah. Other commissioners, Commissioner Kia. Yeah, I've, I've been in it a few times. It is a absolutely beautiful building, beautiful space. Um, I think it was definitely needed for the community. Glad we did something along these lines. <coughs> Only comment I would make uh, other than that is on the top of page 30, the east elevation outdoor view. You can see it in that picture, the land, I know we talk about the landscaping, it's beautiful landscaping, but on that side where most people go in, it's not consistent is how I would describe it. Like you can even see it in the picture right there by the sidewalks, it looks like it's, you know, matty grass and then you have really nice green grass right behind it mm -hmm. um, and then just beyond that i think it just kind of goes back to wildlife would be the way i would describe it um, with the random artwork in between there that you don't see in any of the pictures but mm -hmm. that's the only thing that really kind of you know if you want to call it a critique and if, if that's my biggest complaint obviously it's a well done 
space and definitely glad we have it. And if my understanding is correct, I believe that was an issue with not only the type of grass that was planted, but also the irrigation and kind of how it was watered. Um, we will be restarting that luckily in the future to make that look a little bit nicer because you're right, as you're walking into this really nice looking facility, the first thing you see is you know, a patch of dead grass and then some really nice looking grass. And then um, it's just, it is rather inconsistent. Um, so just, you know, maybe paying attention to the type of grasses that are being planted, making sure that they're going to survive, you know, all the crazy weather that we have here mm. in the Midwest yeah. um, is something to pay attention to. Yeah, Commissioner Wiggins. Looking at the, the bottom image of page 27, um, that kind of indicates that it was supposed to be more of like the native prairie grasses on the side. So is it, was that the plan and it just kind of ended up being kind of a, a dead matted space or, because you said that the irrigation and, and sodding over there. So I guess I was curious if it was, if it was intended to be more of the w native prairie and it just didn't really grow in, it grew in as weeds and just kind of was what was left. There were two areas of the uh, facility that were intended to be more native plantings. The area around the parking lot and the entrance the, to the back patio area, uh, and then the actual side of the building, which is page 30, page 30, bottom of the south elevation, that was to be some native landscaping on that side of the building. So on the south elevation, the bottom of page 30, we are still working on getting the natives to grow there and caring for them. It just takes a few years for that to happen. Around the parking lot area, didn't turn out. We have gone and put irrigation in. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting on um, a warranty of a couple of trees that died to be replaced. Once those get replaced, we're gonna go in and sod it just to match the rest of the, the nice turf area around the building. But we'll keep the natives, like I said, on the uh, what would be the south elevation of the property just something we learned it just didn't didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to in the end mother nature wins <laughs> so like several other commissioners i've been in the building a few times uh, i give it two thumbs up i think it's a, a gorgeous building very versatile uh, very comfortable uh, mr grass to your comment about oh there's another one of those gray utility boxes where that is you know that really to me is kind of the back side of the building so i don't have a problem with that it's 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 not obtrusive and uh, the only thing i really can't comment and i'm glad commissioner pfizer did uh you know i've i walked out on the patio i saw the random art i thought yeah this is cool but I've not really spent any time on the patio, so um, that maybe will come at another event or something. But the, the building as a whole and the fact that, that uh, smaller rooms are available for rent, very versatile building, uh, very nicely done. I, I hope it's very well built and lasts a very long time. Other comments, commissioners? Yeah. I almost feel like we ought to give ourselves a round of applause for this. I'm pleased with how everything worked out in spite of some concerns, but I think, um, you know, this, this makes me happy. Let's, let's try our best to keep up the good work going forward. Mr. Grass, Mr. Cataret, any closing comments on the review? I think you pretty much covered it. You all had some, some really great comments. We were, we were talking before, um, just trying to anticipate the types of questions that you all would be asking. Um, you know, it's one thing if we don't have any questions, it, it maybe means we're doing everything right, or um, if there are questions, hopefully it doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong, but um, you, got, you all mentioned some really good points, things that we don't necessarily think about every time we look at a site plan, um, answer some questions that we had on you know, the screening of different types of um, trash receptacles, um, something like we've been kind of debating on over the last couple months. Um, but overall, like you said, I think a lot of the projects that we've had over the last couple of years have turned out very nicely um, and have, have been pretty consistent with the plans that have been presented to you all. Um, and anything that, that has really gone wrong, I think wasn't really intentional, but was more of a a lesson learned and something to, to pay more attention to the next go around. So uh, thank you all for, for your comments. Yeah, thank you. Um, unless anybody else on the commission has comments about this. Um, well, let's see, next on our agenda would be city council report, Mr. Cataret. Yes, sir, thank you. I'll go ahead and go over 
um, the most recent meeting uh, of councils back on uh, June 11. The uh, council had quite a few development applications on their agenda. They did approve on second and final rating our 27th amendment um, to the UDC, and that was regarding the accessory dwelling units, so that is not part of the code. <laughs> They also approved a second reading an easement vacation as part of the Brightside daycare campus facility. They also approved on uh, first reading that final plat that had gone through the planning commission for that project. First reading, they did approve the rezoning for the, um, what is the Kirby, um, the Kirby estate's property. This is the Compass Health facility. So they approved that rezoning application as well as a a replat uh, of that property. So second reading will be coming up on the 25th for that project. And then they also approved on first reading the 14th plat uh, for Westbrook. Uh, so quite a few development applications on their agenda at that meeting. Um, and again, second reading coming up for all those items uh, at their 25th uh, meeting. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> And we'll tell Mr. Zer what a nice job you did. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would, uh, let's roll on into staff report. Staff report, looking at our, our schedule. Uh, we do not have any items scheduled for the July 3rd meeting. So I thought, I think we believe, I believe we discussed canceling that particular meeting. Right. We will have a meeting on uh, July 17th. Uh, we'll actually at that meeting bring forward the 28th amendment so that will be the items that we discussed at our last planning commission meeting that we went over uh UDC changes so we we've been uh going over the comments that you all made on the various items that we presented to you so we'll be bringing that forward for public hearing on the uh on the 17th okay we'll also we also have agenda items for your first meeting in august uh, that used to be, well, it is the election day, the first oh. Tuesday in August, uh -huh. but the polling location has been moved over to Center View. Oh. So we okay. no longer have to cancel our, our meeting. So we will have an agenda item for action uh, that evening as well. So that's August which? I think it's the third. I, I can't argue. July 3rd. Oh. August 7th is the first Tuesday. Thank you. August 7th, yeah, yes. Thanks. We'll trust the so we will plan. have a meeting that evening. Yeah, good. Good to know. A little planning ahead. Okay, please continue. The last item uh, I'm going to uh, bring forward again. We talked briefly about it at the last meeting on the, the national conference, the national planning conference coming up in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do want to uh, get an individual. We, we won't be registering anything until the month of December, but just to start looking at calendars. This right. particular conference is from Saturday, April 13th to Tuesday, April 16th. Again, it's San Francisco, so it's going to require probably travel Friday. Okay. Um, but the conference only goes until noon on Tuesday, so usually you'll be able to, if you needed to fly back Tuesday, you mm -hmm. could. Uh, so just, again, opening that up to uh, commission members. It's not officially part of the budget. It is part of the budget request. But by the time budget gets to council in October, we'll know if it's included or not. Yeah. It certainly has been for at least the last 12, 13 years. So. I was going to say, remind them they owe us one for missing 2017 or missing 2018. But hold yeah. those funds back and we'll use yeah, them in 20, I know how fiscal years work. But just again, I'll keep reminding the that commission, we, we would like to have a representative go to that, that conference. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Appreciate that. That uh, that concludes my report. Uh, if I can yeah. turn it over to Mr. Rocos. Yeah, Mr. Rocos, please. I just have two things I wanted to report on. <clears throat> the first one is uh, Johnson Drive. If you notice, it's uh, from Dean to Darby. It's uh, ready to be paved. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as the subcontractor is ready to go, uh, that will be paved. And then the contractor will have some final grading and some seating and mulch work to do. And that road will be completed. Uh, 155th Street, which I know everybody always asks about everywhere I go. Uh, the floor and the walls of the culvert have been poured. And so hopefully next week they're planning on pouring the ceiling mm -hmm. to it. Then it'll have to sit for several weeks while the concrete gains strength. And then they'll be able to build the road over it. 
and we'll have the road back open again. Great. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody? When you say several weeks, is that two? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no, usually, I mean, usually you say 28 days to get full strength, but we put cylinders there, so we'll break them after two and three weeks okay. to see if it gets full strength. Okay. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rokos. Um, I'll open the floor for public comment, and seeing no one from the public, I think we'll just move on to commission member comment. Uh, give me a second here. Let's see. Oh, Vice Chair Pfizer, can I start with you? Sure. Well, first, throw my name in for that San Francisco trip. Uh, I, uh, I would love to go. Um, but if someone else wants to go, I understand. Um, and second, I went to the summer scene this past weekend, and it was really uh, well attended, I thought, and there were a lot of Adirondack chairs this mm. year, probably 30 or so. Wow. I did not win, but oh. that's okay. Oh, I no. got a lot of buzz, <laughs> and there were some really, really creative, beautiful chairs, so it was, it was really... Um, a, a good event and there was food and entertainment and uh, I recommend that everybody go next year. Um, it's, it's just a, a great time and I think a great addition to the city. Good. Uh, Commissioner Wiggins. Um, thanks to staff for putting together the review of previous projects. Um, lots of great uh, images and information. Thanks for going out and taking recent photos. Uh, it's very nice to, to have those to be able to review on that. That's yep. all I have. Good. Secretary Crane. I really like this review. I mean, we haven't done much of that in the past, and I think that, uh, you know, that's something that we probably ought to schedule every year. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Meiske. I agree that uh, with Commissioner Crane, I mean, this is something I think that we should bring up at least once a year just to go through the comments that you know, we can get better. Yep. Well said. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Urquia. And just echo the last two commissioners' comments, um, especially as a new commissioner, this is fantastic to kind of remind, to be reminded of what's happened here in the city over the last couple of years and kind of see where we've come um, and comparing, comparing the renderings to the actual locations is, a you know, I think a great exercise and and what impact we're actually having with our conversations on a month-to-month -month basis. But uh, I thank you so much for taking the pictures. You can see the dates on there. Um, so it was recent efforts, um, but appreciate it because it, it does kind of bring the whole thing together. And I enjoyed the exercise, so thank you. Yep. Uh, Mayor Turnbow. I, I can't say anything more. I would echo what everybody else has said. Great report tonight, guys, uh, very comprehensive. Appreciate that. Uh, some great uh, thoughts and ideas came out of it, and uh, I appreciate you doing that. And I would encourage that to continue as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I really don't have much to add except uh, thank you to staff. Uh, I have said before, and I still don't get tired of saying it, we could not do our job as a commission without your help and support. You all do the legwork, and I think you know, previous comments about the photographs and all the legwork that went into this review. Uh, it, it's very visible. Um, I don't know if council sees this. I guess maybe it's part of our minutes or something, but uh, if there's an opportunity, seems like certainly would be worth sharing with them just because, uh, you know, it's probably good for us to pat ourselves on the head every now and then. and. Council being an integral part of the process uh, should be included in that. Other than that, if no one has any other comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Kia, second by Commissioner Wiggins to adjourn. All those in favor, raise a hand, please. And I have seven in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. Thank you all, and we'll see you in in a month, I guess. <laughs>